can I upgrade uh, my system uh, or add panels? Somebody had asked me, could I add panels to my system? Well, my inverters are 5.4 kVW and my panels, my 12 panels, are each 540 watts, so that's a total of 5,400 kilowatts. So my panels match my inverter um, to get the max of the most productivity out of those panels as I can get. We've never come close to 5,000 kilowatts in, uh, of usage in a daytime. Um, 3,000 has been kind of the max for us. That's with the pool pump going, a load of laundry going, uh, cooking something in the oven, uh, fans going, you know, whatever. That's it. So we're more than covering our usage during the day. And all, of course, what's left is going to the batteries to charge them. Our batteries typically charge 100% by 10, 30, 11 o'clock if it's a full solar day. If it's cloudy, maybe 12, 12, 30, 1 o'clock. If it's been cloudy, really thick clouds all day long, um, we may not even get to 100%. So uh, thank goodness that just hasn't happened a whole, whole lot for us. Um, we really need to start that that evening, that night with a 100% battery. And, and like I said, 98% of the time that's that's been the case. Now, where, and so if I wanted to add panels and add production, uh, I could. I've got more than enough space on my roof for that. Uh, but I'd have to change inverters because my inverter is, is maximized for my panels. If the, the main thing that I need to, uh, and it took me about a month of usage to figure this out, that I need, I just wish I had more amp hours of battery. I have 200 amp hours and, and it gets us through most nights, but you know, my wife gets up early, 5.30, 6 a.m. Um, sun's just coming up, so it's really low, and you're not getting much production at that time of the morning. She needs to cook rice, get my son, you know, breakfast, and get his lunch ready to go, and uh, get him out the door. And um, so she's needing to do some power usage type stuff. Rice cookers take a lot of power, um, and and we may or may not, we may already have used up our 80% of battery because remember, 20% has to. It has a cutoff to, you know, so you don't damage your battery uh, and extend the life of it, actually. Uh, so 20% is it for us. Um, and there may be a 30-minute window there where she's using high energy. We're at the end of our battery. The sun's just not quite up enough yet and not pulling enough production. Where the grid has to supplement uh, a little bit. So... That happens. If I had another 200 amp battery added to my system, which I am planning to do, then I, I really wouldn't have, I, I would not have to pull from the grid. The only way we would ever have to pull from the grid at that point was if we had an, we had an extended weather event where our battery didn't get 100% charge and, and the production's low. I, I think another 200 amp hour battery would, would, would go a long way to pretty much taking us off grid. I'm still not going to disconnect from the power company because it's a, it's a nice third tier option. And when we get to cost later, I think you'll see that it's, it's, it's not an expensive option either. So, all right, that's that. How does a converter run during brownout? Inverter run during... Somebody asked me, I, think, I, I guess I had said something about the inverter and, and, and taking power to run the inverter. And if there's a brownout, then you're not getting that from your, your grid. Well, that, I've since found out that that inverter actually has a built-in lithium battery and can basically run itself. Uh, and of course, you always got your other, your, your whole house battery that also ties into. So your inverter doesn't, doesn't run out of power regardless what the scenario is. It's always working. All right, number eight here. Uh, how does weather affect the system? Well, I think I've already done a pretty good job of sharing that. Has a huge effect on it. Um, and, and somebody asked me one time, you know, I've, should I get solar? We, you know, we, it rains here for almost a month straight. Um, and, and really the, the answer to that is, you know, it's, it's very individualized. If the cost of the system, if you can, in my opinion, this is totally Ricky Baker's opinion, but if you over that, as a, other, let's say you're in that scenario where you got a month of rain, but you got 11 months where you got sun um, and, and, and you're, 
you're saving that money. You're not sending that money to your power company. How, how long would it take you to pay off that system with that money you saved? Uh, and for us, uh, you know, I think I figured it out one day, and it's going to be right about in between two and, two and a half to three years, this system will be paid off by the money we will have saved not sending to Terrellco. So to me, it's worth it. If it takes you five, six years to offset that cost, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that I would probably do that simply because by then you may, you may have to add a new battery. Maybe your battery life is, is diminished. And um, maybe you've, you know, weather has gotten to some of your panels. Um, you know, what, who knows what could happen. You may have to be adding to your system at that five or six year point. Um, I know with, with the system I had in the Dominican, uh, those, lit, those lead acid batteries don't last uh, like these lithium batteries do. So you had to be prepared to totally replace those batteries, all, all eight of them for me. Um, and that was, you know, that, that's a pretty high cost. And that was about every three years, maybe three, four years. I think I've replaced them twice. And I've had that house for eight years. So, yeah, about every three or four years, you got to do that. So, you, you got to look at all of that and, and make a decision on if it's going to be worth it to you or not. Um, if, if you got six months of bad weather where you live, then I would say probably not. I don't think you're going to be able to recoup the cost of the, of the system uh, in enough, you know, quick enough. So, hard to answer that question. It's really up to where you're at what your usage is, that type of stuff, okay? The uh, bill comparison, okay, this is uh, what a lot of you have been waiting on. And really, guys, I'm just gonna be br brutally honest with you, I can't do apples to apples here, okay? I just can't. And, and the reason being, uh, we lived in Belonga City for a year and a half, uh, in a rent house, two bedroom, two bath, um, smaller home than this, we just didn't have near the uh, the electrical consumption because we didn't have a pool, we didn't have a water well, we didn't have a full size refrigerator. We did have a couple of uh, uh, one horse AC window units, which we only used at night when we were sleeping, and we actually we actually restricted ourselves to a certain number of hours, like eight to nine hours a night. Here, there's a lot more. And, and to be honest with you, let's say for example, our bill in, in Belonga usually average between six I think and eight yeah six and eight thousand pesos a month that's going to be high end about about 150 175 dollars a month again not much energy use is going on there believe it or not compared to this house but if I had to guess this home would probably be just based on what we have here versus what we had in Belonga I would guess that our energy uses would be up around 15 to 17,000 pesos a month. And that's a lot of money for a monthly electric bill. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I can't compare the two. <laughs> There's just no way. What has our electric bill been? Well, we've had three, three electric bills up to this point. And uh, the first one was 1,500 pesos which is about 30 bucks. Uh, the second one was 2,000, and, and we're going into the rainy season, okay? So that was, first one we were at kind of the end of summer, second one we were starting into rainy season, and the third one, full-blown rainy season. Our bill was 3,200, which is about 60 bucks. Now, something else you didn't take into effect that, that I know has had an effect on us and that is uh, all the workers that we've had here doing work, uh, contractors. And every one of them has a portable welder, uh, drills, saws, you know, the, and those portable welders are huge energy users. So I'm expecting this next bill to start on its way down. And I think for the most part, probably eight months a year, our bill is probably going to be, until I get another battery, it's going to probably be around 1,000 to 1,500 pesos a month, 30 bucks. I can live with that, guys, with, with, the, with the amount of things I have here that use energy. I think it was a very good, and I'm not just saying this to make myself feel good. <laughs> I think it was a good decision, um, and, and one that I knew I wanted to do if I could afford it. Um, and LES helped us to make that dream come true. 
Number 12, net metering. Is it an option? Several of you have asked me this question. And let me just be, again, brutally honest with you. Um, I believe the power companies here, and, 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 and the power companies are, uh, there's all different kinds of power companies, depending basically on your municipality uh, or your province. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they have to have some kind of net metering option for people. But let me tell you, they can't possibly really want you to do it. <laughs> and again, my opinion, they make it tough. Uh, there's lots of fees, lots of charges, lots of requirements. If you've been in the Philippines for any length of time, you know what I mean when I say requirements. They make it just really difficult. Uh, so the answer to that question is, Terelco, my power company, does have a net metering option. Will Rick Baker get it? Probably not. Because I, I although I'm, I'm a fairly patient person, there are things here uh, in my new, new home, abode, area that I live in, the country I live in, that really test that patience. Um, and, and I'm not fun to be around when I, when I lose it. So would I be able to sell it back? Absolutely. We, like I said, 3,000 kilowatts maximum we use in throughout the day. And usually it's between one and 2,000 kilowatts. So that's 3,000 kilowatts. My panels are only producing what I need. Um, so even though my panels uh, and my inverter is a 5,400 watt kilowatt system, um, it's only going to produce what I need. And uh, if I had net metering, then, then it, it has the potential to, uh, to sell back like 3,000 kilowatts. And, uh, and that would probably be beneficial to us. It would definitely wipe out whatever bill we had uh, from the on-grid usage, I have no doubt. And if there's a compensation program, it would most likely do that as well. I just don't see myself jumping through the hoops that, in my opinion, are, are just there to make life uh, as, as uncomfortable as possible. <laughs> and I see that in a lot of aspects here in the Philippines. It's like a business, it's a whole different world as far as customer satisfaction and all that stuff. It just really doesn't exist here. Um, it's, it's not really about the customer. Um, so, if that tells you anything, those of you who lived here any length of time, I know you already know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm singing to the choir. Ongoing maintenance cost. Um, don't have any. Um, at least with, with this system, I haven't had any. Uh, if I had uh, no, uh, lead-acid batteries, I could count on them every, about every three years replacing all of them. Uh, you can't just replace one or two or three you, on lead acid batteries. You've got to replace them all um, at the same time. So that would definitely be an added cost if you went with lead acid batteries. Uh, the lithium, I don't remember exactly how many years I'm supposed to get out of this uh, lithium, but it's a lot compared to, to my old lead acid uh, batteries. So uh, I'm not expecting any. I'm not expecting any type of maintenance costs probably within the next five years. Uh, the panels have gotten so good, um, you know, I, I, I expect them to go 10 or more years, probably more closer to 15. Um, keep them clean and that type of thing, and it should, should last me quite a long time. So as of right now, I have no ongoing ma maintenance costs. My, when I had lead acid batteries, you know, we had to, we had to add uh, distilled water to those. Um, on a regular basis because they, you know, they use up the water. Of course, the lithium doesn't work that way. So there's nothing to add, nothing to maintain. Um, yeah, you just use it. So uh, as far as maintenance costs on my system, I, I'm not expecting any for, for a long time. So <laughs> that's it. I, I hope I have covered... Um, Everything and, and, and you guys' questions and comments were a huge help for me. 
sorry it took me so long to do this, but I really did want to get about three months worth of uh, usage under my belt. Um, be able to, you know, kind of give you a good idea of what the bills have been. And again, some of this is guessing on my part, but based just purely on the weather um, and, and how we use our system, uh, I should see those bills coming back down. So 3200 was our highest bill, and I expect it to be our highest bill for the year. Um, and that was in... Uh, October. November should be better. December should be even better. And I'm thinking by January, we're back around the 1,000 peso uh, electric bill range. So hopefully that's encouraging for some of y'all. Um, those of y'all that are kind of on the fence, but again, take into consideration where you are, you know, what things you're going to be using on this system. Um, what's the weather like on a consistent basis in your area? It is the weather good enough to be able to offset the, recover your costs uh, quicker? Uh, three years is kind of the, the maximum for me. If I can't recover my costs within three years, to me it's not worth it. Uh, that's just my opinion, but um, there you go. All right, guys, um, I'm gonna leave it right there. If you haven't looked at our first solar vlog, I encourage you to go back and do that. We just put up a vlog last night um, on some home improvements to include the front wall, the bolo screen, and we're now adding a storage building onto the house because I just need some more, I need a workshop. I want a little workshop, I've always had one. I have no place to, you know, work on my brush cutter uh, unless it's on the ground and it's hard for me to get up and down off the ground with these blasted knees that I have. So I want my workbench back and, and I need a little more storage. So we're, we've got a little space, we're doing that. So check that vlog out, just went up last night. Uh, also did a little one on, the, if you're in this uh, area and you, you, you're really craving a good American breakfast, we put up a vlog about a little place that we love in uh, Angeles. Uh, it's really off the beaten path, little bitty place, but the people are wonderful that work there. Uh, always make us feel welcome, like it's just literally us walking into our own kitchen, and they make an incredible American breakfast. Got another vlog coming up on uh, window screens, mirrors, um, screen doors, you know, just different things that we've got going on uh, that we're trying to do to improve our home. Um, yeah, y'all be y'all. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love for you to do that. Uh, hit that little bell thing and, and that way when we do put something up you'll get a you'll get a quick message saying hey the good the bad the philippines has a new vlog and um, yeah we'd love it if you check that out okay sorry this is a long one but i had a lot of information to give you the good the bad the philippines